I'm thinking about MDMA and this idea. I think it was um, Ben Sessa described it as like a bulletproof vest or something. Like you can go into the trauma with this like bulletproof vest. I don't know if he used this next language, but you know, like a bulletproof vest of like love and safety. And with that on, you can go into what otherwise feels absolutely unsafe as like yeah. a memory and as an experience. And that that doing that sort of brings love and safety to those memories, but also brings you an opportunity to to sort of remap the meaning that those events were integrated as having in right. your, you know, perception of reality or perception of life, sense of identity and response to life, and then leaning into somatic, thus the sort of uh what is what is um Stephen Porter say the 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 neuroceptive response to stimuli, the assessments of safety and danger can initially confused with the trauma can be sort of reorganized. So there's a, a clearer sense of what's dangerous is dangerous and what's safe is safe and not the other way around. And that can come with the with the safety and love of like the safety of the love of the MDMA, even if it's difficult. And what you're suggesting yeah. here is that ketamine can have a similar effect like effect afterwards, like sort of resulting effect. But instead of coming in with the love and safety, it comes in with this sort of like detachment in a way. Does that sound about right? Or maybe you can clarify that for me? Yeah, I think there's some version of it. I mean, the intricacies of it, are, you know, it's very nuanced and I think complicated in terms of different people perceive it differently. But generally speaking, yeah, I think that there's a real truth to that. There's a way in which uh, having a little distance can help people work through something. And when we're able to harness that in conjunction with somatic work where people are able to then allow their nervous system to have a new experience of something, the result is that something really shifts in a big way. Like, I'm trying to think. So part of, you know, so part of this is this is the somatics and part of this is just is the distance. Right. And so there's different times in which these things um, assist the work in, in, in different ways. But I had a guy in the, in the office recently who um, recovering alcoholic who had looked at a lot of, you know, had spent plenty of time looking at these alcoholic years <clears throat> had spent, spent plenty of time looking at the chaotic years of his early 20s and under the ketamine was able to feel a degree of calm that his body had not really known, maybe since childhood, maybe never, but it was actually the sedating quality of the ketamine that started to give him a new reference point for what it was actually it could be to exist because it was so much more calm it was, you know, it's, it, it stood in great contrast to how normally tight and hyper aroused he was. And from there, his mind just naturally went to earlier years, teenage years, where he had to act out ridiculously to get anyone to pay attention to him and his chaotic family and feeling just the rage, the rage of how unpaid attention to he was, right? And that was totally new territory. I mean, like on some conceptual level, he knew about this, but to really feel into how deeply suffering he was as, as a teen and get a chance to start feeling this in the body in an undefended way really started to shift something for him.